and let's see what Solomon do. Second Chronicles, the third chapter, we're going to start reading at verse 1. Second Chronicles 3 and 1. All right, my brother, go ahead. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Go ahead. And he began to build in the second day of the second month, in the fourth year of his reign. So after Solomon reigned for four years, he began to build the house of the Lord. Now once he get the temple built, you have a real popular person who came to visit Solomon, and this person is none other than the Queen of Sheba. Let's go and see what her thoughts was when she came to our forefather Solomon. Let's go back to 1 Kings. Back, back up to 1 Kings, the 10th chapter. 1 Kings chapter 10, because everyone has heard of the Queen of Sheba's visit to our forefather Solomon. But we're going to show you the extent of that visit. 1 Kings 10, we're going to start reading at verse 1. All right, my brother, go ahead. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. So now when she hear about it, not only did she come to fulfill her curiosity, she going to come and try to test him with hard questions. Go ahead on and read. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And when she came to Solomon, she communed with him. It didn't say that she laid with him and had a baby, Memelech, who became this Ethiopian garden of the ark. It says she communed with him because her purpose of coming there was to test him with these hard questions, right? And when she was brought before Solomon, she laid out everything that was on her mind to him. And after she did this, let's see what her response was. Go ahead. Three. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. Go ahead. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendants of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. When she saw the way he carried himself, the food that was served him, how the people who waited on him acted, and how he dressed in the manner of all the people that he was in charge of, she, she was through. <laughs> the book said she had no spirit left in her. She was lost for words. She didn't know what to do. Go ahead on and read. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine land of thy acts, and of thy wisdom. Howbeit, I believed not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever, therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. Now look, this is a queen of another region. She's not an Israelite, right? And after she see the way Solomon carry herself, what's the first thing that she do? She bless the Lord God of Israel because he is a priest of the Most High God. Right. And if the people see how we carry ourselves and hear the wisdom that come out of our mouth, they would do the same thing. Right. Blessed be the Lord God, which delighted in thee because of the way he conducted himself. Continue and read. Uh, did you do verse 10? No. Go ahead to verse 10. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold and of spices, very great store, and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Now skip down to verse 23. And continue. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Now you see that? All of the earth came to hear the wisdom 
that God put in Solomon's heart. This wasn't Solomon's on his own doing. And this is the part that we forget about every time we achieve a certain status, we think that this is something that we didn't did. We haven't done anything. The book reminds us that if we think we are something when we are nothing, we deceive ourselves. All of the credit belongs to the Lord. Right. And our forefathers at this point hadn't forgot it. Now, I want to go back into some history and show you in history what we just read in the Bible. This is uh, from this piece, Treasures of the House of the Lord, again. It says, it is known that most or all of the holy vessels of gold and silver from the tabernacle were with the ark when it was brought from the city of David to the first temple by Solomon. Although David desired to build a permanent house of God in Jerusalem, his son Solomon built the first temple. The plans were the plans of David, and David amassed the material. It says, 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 19, and 2 Chronicles, 2 through the 4th chapter and 1 Kings 6 through the 7th chapter will tell you about this. It says the materials included 100,000 talents of gold and 1 million talents of silver. Now look at this here. From his own private fortune, David also gave 3,000 talents of gold and 7,000 talents of high-grade silver. Once again, a talent is 100 pounds. And David gave 3,000 talents of gold and 7,000 talents of high-grade silver out of his own fortune. It said, this is an enormous quantity of gold and silver by any standard. 100,000 talents of gold equal 3,750 tons. Value today, which was about 16 years ago when this was printed, $45 billion. One million talents of silver equals 37,500 tons. Value, 16 years ago, $10.8 billion. In round numbers, the wealth of the first temple was about $56 billion. Now, this is what we were able to do back before the shores of America that we don't know nothing about. This is how we was living. This is how we prepared our residence for the God that we serve. This is the splendor and wealth of ancient Israel that we don't have a clue about. It says, in addition to all the gold and silver, great quantities of bronze, cedar, iron, and precious stones were contributed. The most holy place of Solomon's temple was lined with cedar from Lebanon and covered with 600 talents of gold. The gold plated in alone, about 540,000 troy ounces, would be worth about $270 million 16 years ago. The doors of the temple were also covered with gold plates. During this period of Israel's history, Solomon's income was 666 talents of gold per annum, or either 600,000 troy ounces which would be worth, 16 years ago, $300 million a year. This is Solomon's pay for being king back in that day. During the reign of Solomon, silver was as common as stones on the ground. In Jerusalem, Solomon made 200 massive shields, each 300 shekels in weight, to hang on the walls of his palace. His ivory throne was overlaid with gold. It wasn't enough for him to sit on ivory. He had to cover the ivory with gold. <laughs> so King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. The splendor of Solomon's kingdom brought him recognition and fame that attracted much foreign attention. For example, during her visit to test Solomon with hard questions, the Queen of Sheba brought Solomon 120 talents of gold, which was about $54 million, a very great store of spices and precious stones. Well, we just read that in the Bible, didn't we? So now I'm getting ready to update for you what those prices would be if we reproduced them today. The gold of the temple 
was 3,750 tons, which would be today 186 billion, 408 million, 835,830 dollars. That's just the value of the gold if we had to do it today. The silver was 37,500 tons. That would come to 34 million, 407,532 dollars and 88 cents. I take that back. 34 billion, 407 million, 532,261 dollars and 86 cents. So the total value of the silver and gold combined that went into the temple that Solomon built for the Lord back in his day, if we were to build that temple today, it would cost $220 billion, $816,386,091.88. This is how we lived when we were kings. This is what was going on before we came to America. This is the part of our history that us as well as the world don't have a clue about. This is why we are such a precious commodity to the rest of the world because even in captivity, the Lord is still blessing us. And this is why the other families of the earth is being able to be so rich off us because the money that they're making, they're making it off us. If we was gone, they'd go broke in a heartbeat. You talked about the economy collapsing. We could collapse the economy in a minute, in a heartbeat. They talked about the gold plating that Solomon had on his doors and on his throne and whatnot, right? The gold plating alone came to a value of $920,354,400. Solomon's annual income, if you had to pay him today, and this is a yearly income. You would have to pay him $1,022,616 a year. And the value of the gold and the spices that Queen of Sheba brought Solomon, if she was to have to bring that to him today, she would have to bring him $298,254,137.33. That's how much money you got to bring to talk to me. They play the president, you know, 10,000, 100,000 and whatnot to give his speeches and whatnot. You want to come and talk to me and play with me and test my wisdom? You better come with a big checkbook. <laughs> and this is how we roll. And this is how life was when we were kings. But now, the Lord turned around and told Solomon something, right? He said, I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you riches. But then he turned around and told Solomon, that if you hearken into my voice and act like you got some sense, then I'm going to give you long life then. Well, Solomon, he got a little bit beside himself. <laughs> and let's go and see what Solomon did. Let's go into 1 Kings, the 11th chapter. 1 Kings, chapter 11. Let's go and take a look at what Solomon did. Let's see what got Solomon in trouble. 1 <laughs> Kings, 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Kings 11 and 1. All right, my brother, go ahead. But King Solomon loved many strange women. You see what got him in trouble? <laughs> but King Solomon loved many strange women. We're talking about many. We're talking about a lot. Go ahead on and read. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. The whole world was coming to him, wasn't it? <laughs> and he loved the world. He truly loved the women of the world. <laughs> Go ahead on and read. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they would turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. See, the Lord warned 